Every painting is an exploration of an idea, an attempt in trying to bring something out. Every decision made to the painting is helping craft this idea. Art to me is about exploration, understanding, feeling, getting to know yourself more. It's a journey. A journey that is different to all of us. Some people make art to relieve stress. Some do it to make a statement. Other people make art because that's the only way they can express themselves. None of these people are wrong in their reasoning to create art, because, as so many people have already said, there is no one way of making art. Being creative for me is to unfold myself to the world, to the universe, and to myself. When I paint, I do it for the satisfaction of bringing something to life, whether it be beautiful, like a butterfly seeking the warmth of a single red flower in a field of snow, or you know, a person on a blazing unicorn with guns in space. Hi there, my name is Stuffs and today I will be taking you on a journey through life. So, get yourself comfortable, wrap yourself in a blanket, wrap that blanket in another blanket, make yourself a blanket burrito, and we will just sit down, relax and just talk through the whole thing, put on some nice music and just have a generally nice time. In this video I will focus mainly on the process I used for this specific painting, but this process kind of applies to everything I do, because I use a certain mindset when creating this kind of art, so I think it should work out fine. It should go without saying that there is no one way to do this, art is just about exploring, creating just a lot of stuff with your own mind, with your own experiences, and just putting that on a canvas, however you like. Okay, so when I start a painting, I start with the idea in my head. For this picture, it was pretty clear in the start. I had a vision of this character standing on a unicorn with uh, with two two machine guns, just looking the happiest she has ever been. Now, for the background and for the environment itself, I was more uncertain as to what to make. I was I was thinking something blazing, something explosive, something radiant, but I didn't really know what. So. The sketch starts out with just just lines and some blocking. I think this is a really good thing, especially the blocking, because if you have something, some kind of placement you really want in your painting, some posture, a certain spot you want to fill, blocking it in with a flat color can be nice to just visualize the the relations between empty space and the motive itself. So. What I did was a combination of that, just mishing and mashing some solid shapes, some lines, and just gradually making sense of my idea. And, and then when I had everything clear, then I moved over to the line art. Here's a thing I think some people might be struggling with, is when to stop sketching and when to start doing act the actual line art. And the thing I have come to learn is that you should make the sketch as... You can make it accurate, but you shouldn't put too much energy into it, because then you might end up disliking the line art and liking the sketch more. I've run into that trap more times than I can count that. I make a sketch, I think it looks good, then I stop lining and I come back to the sketch over and over again. I think that the sketch looks way better. So I'd, I would suggest just make it as simple, but clear to you to understand as possible and then you move on to the line art from there. Now when it comes to sketching a character you might wonder about whether you should use a reference or not. My general advice is to just go for references where you need them. I used references for this painting, not the particular pose, more just like general horse anatomy, how to make draw a horse because I haven't drawn a horse in forever so I needed to really freshen up on that. Um, and for the proportions of the character, um, I just kind of, I've drawn this character so many times I kind of have it under my skin how she looks, so I just kind of went with what I already know and just tried to work on that. She's kind of a long skinny character, so I just used those features. I had to kind of play with perspective and she's standing with like 
bent knees and she's also standing on the horseback stretch to kind of look in balance and not like she's falling off. Now when I do the line art I tend to do it uh, similar for each painting I do now lately at least. Um, before I used to do a lot of heavy thick lines but now I'm doing a lot more thinner lines to kind of get the contour and leave more room for colors and shading but I still keep the same basic principle about having them jagged and hard and kind of this rough looking style making more energy and impact on the characters themselves. Now when I do the line art I have a uh, certain setting on my brush that reacts to the velocity as the speed of the stroke so the faster my brush is the thinner the stroke is that's kind of the the general setting i have for all my line arts i found out this is kind of a nice way to just do lines for me at least now for the coloring of the painting this is kind of the main main thing the main focus i have maybe three different ways i have used in this painting it's one for the background which is completely without any line art. Uh, for the characters I went really comic style and for the rock or the environment I used I think maybe almost entirely just half tone which was a completely new way for me to just make something so it was really fun to try out but to start with the background itself the space environment. Uh, when I made this I started out with just having a flat color uh, and just a little gradient. I think that's a good way to start with a simple simplest form of color you know and then you gradually just start adding more and more of the colors where you want them. So I started with a really simple gradient from pink to blue downwards and then made colors every here and there and just blended them together. I don't know if that makes sense I'm just trying to make sense of what I did. That's the funny thing about colors is that there are so many different ways to do them and you just kind of have to figure out what colors do you like to use, what way do you like to use colors, if you'd like to just mess around, try to just make it fit and then form something out of that, that works completely fine. So yeah, this, that's another thing. Um, when you color your paintings, you should try to be aware of where your light is coming from because I think when making something that's supposed to look believable, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, the consistency of style, the consistency of anatomy, and the lighting you use. Because if something is made, it looks like the anatomy is perfect, the line art is perfect, the proportions are perfect, and everything looks great, but the lighting is just off, you get this kind of weird feeling about it. So. I think you should try to focus where is the light source, how does this affect the characters and how does this affect the colors, the mood, the atmosphere. This light can be used really well to convey focus, to make sure that the viewer knows where to see. I would say that I have kind of trouble with it in this painting because the supernova at the top kind of takes away the, the attention, but at the same time it adds something because you have these crazy characters at the bottom just standing in front of this huge landscape with just clouds and explosions and they just look so, what could you say, fabulous? <laughs> Trying to just live their lives as crazy vigilante unicorns, space wizards or something. And uh, yeah, it kind of, kind of out adds this insanity to the picture, which is kind of what I wanted, but at the same time it gets distracting if you look at look at it so you kind of don't know where your eyes are supposed to be resting is it supposed to be on the horse the face of the character the guns the clouds it's kind of messy now when it came to the characters like the horse and the woman i have more of a streamlined uh, approach so for the horse i use I used a flat color for the general areas I wanted to shade and that that's kind of an advice I think I would give to everyone who wants to do some kind of realistic shading on people and just animals that if you're going to do a light color start with a dark color because then you can go over with a lighter color later because then the darker colors will be at the edges and they will be there already so when you then mix in the lighter colors you get these kind of 
nice transition between the light to the dark. So I started doing that. I had a flat color and then I started shading in like uh, the main areas where I wanted to have shadow, the main areas where I wanted to have light. And then I did this technique with half tones where I mask certain areas. I use kind of like a tool in the software I'm using called Clip Studio. This tool allows me to create um, half tones in different sizes depending on the marked area. So I did that. I made these half tones, but then I inverted the selection of the half tones so everything else but the half tones was selected. That left me with flat colors with holes in them, and that kind of helped me get this kind of transition when you look at it, which kind of I, th I think looks nice. I did this technique for the highlights as well. Um, and I used the same size for the halftone so that the highlights and the shadows could blend in together. Uh, and then I added some just strong lines of light uh, around like the face with the red markings and the lines of the uh, stomach and the legs of the unicorn marking kind of like where the light is coming from. And that's kind of what I tried to do with the main character as well. Doing her was kind of tricky because she was standing on a horse, so the horse had to shadow her as well as the light had to touch her. So I wasn't really sure how to do her, but I experimented back and forth and back and forth. So yeah, she was just a result of a lot of flat colors, and then I marked a lot of areas to do the half tones again. I mixed and matched a lot of the half tones to just get it to feel right. So if you're going to do half tones, just Try to mix a lot of different variations of them. Go wild, I guess that's that's kind of my moral of, of painting. Just go wild, see what works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Might work later, but not for this one. And if it works, that is great. Uh, as for the guns, I think I just searched for a semi-automatic rifle on Google and just found something and just tried to replicate that design. Uh, it's not really much more than that, I would really recommend to use references whenever you feel like it, because there's no shame in just trying to figure out how something works. So yeah, as I said, this rock was made entirely from half tones. Now, I, I actually made the rock, like, I drew it with ink and I shaded it and everything, but I then did what I explained a minute ago with the selection, so I selected some of the areas, made half tones of them, selected some of the other areas, made half tones of them, and as you can see that the blue highlights are actually just negative space, there's nothing there, it's actually just background from the blue the blue smoke, but it kind of gives the effect of a reflection of the light, which I kind of was, which I kind of found really neat. But yeah, the overall painting was, I'm really happy with how it turned out because Again, I experimented with a lot of it. It was supposed to look really different, but it turned out that that wasn't what this painting wanted. This painting wanted to be a majestic space adventure with guns and pirates and fire and explosions and maybe some buried treasure in one of the clouds. I don't know. And I think that's a really beautiful thing about art is that you, you know there is something you want to tell people and your art reflects 100% of how certain you are about telling that and how certain you are about your way of conveying that. And whether that be just like memeing with this character standing on a unicorn with guns looking like she is having the best time of her life to actually making something really beautiful like the example I used in the beginning of this video with the bird of butterfly and the single red flower in the field of snow it's like you know there's something there you know there's something some kind of weird philosophy some weird you know the person who made that has a story every person has a story and making art is all about telling stories and just getting out something you want to get out or something only you can tell and that's kind of the most unique thing about art is that it's special to every one of us in our own unique way and we can make whatever we want and we can make it however we want and there's nothing stopping us from creating just this big big ball and clusters of just creativity and weirdness and just community and companionship.
what I mainly want you to get out of this is that art is a medium for expressing something whether it be just a thought or a really strong emotion it just might be something to relieve you of just everyday stress it might be the outlet you have to talk to friends over the internet or just talk in general that whatever it is art is a wonderful thing and you can do whatever you want with it and that's the magical thing there's nobody telling you what to make so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video, um, I don't know what really more to say, it was really fun making this, I hope you all got something out of this, so yeah that's it, bye.